Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vokayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one we have Nidley for the first time in a very long time. Not doing anything Dark Harvesty this game, we are going to be doing a Conqueror room page. Let's slap that up early for you now so that you can see there's no biscuits and no booties and no cosmic insight. Rejoice, right? So, her position in the meta has not exactly been, you know, cemented as some kind of top tier pick for a very long time now, or at least a while, at least since Worlds. However, she still has her place if you have good jungle knowledge and are mechanically proficient. By that I mean, you know, the best to play the game because when you make her work, boy, does it work. So this game, absolute perfection jungling. However, there's a little bit of an interesting fact about that I will reveal, you know, towards the end of the video. Obviously, gotta keep some suspense. And the story of the game is still going to be, how can you carry no matter what? Essentially, we've had a lot of variety in terms of our game states recently. Behind, come back, off meta. Uh, the dominant meta, I kind of want a game that just shows you everything that jungle has to offer in terms of pressure throughout, how you can chase a perfection. We start with Q, we get a leash on the blue buff, Rukan gives us a, gives us a hippity hoppity, very nice, we enjoy. Um, we have this ward here, which is of course a very good ward, this protects us against invades, I don't think we're going to anticipate an invade from a Hecarim. We see here the bot's late to show, and top is late to show, so basically, as soon as you see bot lane come out of this, right, with no mana spent, you pretty much know straight up that this dude leashed also his mana is 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 uh diminished slightly so you know that he started here which means this ward is actually going to be pretty good let's see what hecarim does but it will fail you know that will fail that ward will die so at least you'll see if there's a you know kind of late invade now but you're not going to get the full information if he does a blue side quadrant into the red buff that's where that ward kind of falls a little bit but because you are nidly if you're good mechanically as you're watching you can clear pretty proficiently um that is the trick isn't it there's always a trick with Nidalee. You're going to spend a lot of hours in the practice tool because if you don't make that work, uh, you're already failing. So much like Karthus in that sense, just made way more intense. You know, if you're Karthus and you're not clearing three minutes or five or things like this, you know, changes uh, from patch to patch, then you're losing the, the benefit you get from that champion. Likewise with Nidalee. So essentially, no invade here. We pull the camp out just in case he's cheesing us. Again, if you're really concerned about the invade, drag it into the bush. Bot lane now will have to understand that they leashed. Enemy bot lane did not leash. Hecarim is therefore sequencing down, and given that this is still the dominant way to play the jungle, you know, at least in that first phase, um, jungling is still kind of kind of rolling with that. Obviously, with the first crab having 80% reduction in experience, it shifted the, 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 the necessity of us to actually go and, you know, secure these and die them. So if you lose them, it's fine. But here, basically, we've got a beautifully thick wave. If you were playing something like an Elise, uh, Warwick, Avi, this is some the kind of dive I would want to see, you know, don't do the full clear for no reason. See the main channel video where I discussed this. This is a good dive you can have if you don't do a full clear and waste your time doing so. Um, we have here, obviously, Hecarim Genki bot lane, as expected. This is just very interesting for me because, I mean, they, they put it in such a state that essentially just inviting the gank. I mean, like, why would you even trade in this particular moment? It is absolutely asinine to see that. I'm, I'm, I'm wholly disappointed <laughs> the fact that this is Grandmaster Challenger career, but then, you know, happens to them like it happens to you. So you can see that this isn't some kind of silver, you know, destruction thing where this doesn't happen anywhere else. I mean, even in Hilo, they do not trade relevant to jungle pathing. They do not think about it. And uh, Nidalee obviously having the scanner here, not really using it. Uh, Shin Chao decides to go for it, but now it's kind of, you know, if it's warded and you're not scanning for a dive, you should always do that. Uh, Ari also in the meantime, let's, oh, sorry to go back again, but here we go. Hecarim obviously would transition up here, rotates for this gank, hits the knockup, misses that, but we get the ignite. And it's the final tick, blue buff plus, uh, red buff plus ignite equals dead talon. And it's always good to see a dead talon. Careful for this now, you have to rotate up and be very cautious about the collapse here. This gets hit, we see the Ari, so no, it's, we know it's the Hecarim that hit it. Um, Poppy's really worried about the lane. But she, she, you kind of, you can't afford to stay here. You know, you just cannot afford to stay here. Oof, oof, heal, beautifully done. We're able to get one kill back, which is obviously very, very good. But oh, the Yumi as well. Man, this is this is exciting. This is very exciting. A lot to unpack here. So, Botlane doesn't trade relevant to Jungle Pie. I think 328. You know the Hecarim's in this area. Why are you going in? Regardless, he dies. Moves on up. This guy is low, so Hecarim says, "Right, I'll kill you." Nidalee doesn't scan. Waits way too long for the dive. And because she doesn't scan, gets pre-chunked and makes the dive way more difficult. Shin Chao does a good job of handling the wave. They get collapsed on. Poppy doesn't want the wave to be put into a negative state, so overstays when she shouldn't. She dies, but Nidalee gets a lot back from the Hecarim. Three sister to the Hecarim, and obviously Yumi's a champion that exists. Bot lane, we have more fistings going on, and the minions have... 
not own their dinner. So no dinner for the minions. Nidalee, in the meantime, goes down. We could gank this if they're up and available, but they are not, so we don't. We see the plant get hit here. If we have vision, we do not. So again, this dude should be very thoughtful. Thoughtful is the word? Uh, <laughs> mindful of where the heck room might be. So we see here the crab. Obviously, this is very, very important because if you're tracking CS, you would know that the heck room, um, once he comes up here, has not done this crab, right? You keep pressing tab, you can track where the CS is going. And we know he's sort of top side, so you know he's going to be focused on the tier 2 grump, even if it doesn't make the most sense. And again, Wave State's not in a good position, punishes 100% the poppy for her positioning. A uh, setup for Nidalee equals free kills. Obviously, Rakan is doing good work. He dies regardless, but to the tower execution style. Very, very nice. And now we can steal this Raptor camp because we saw the Hecarim topside. So from Nidalee's perspective, you're seeing the difficulties of being Nidalee versus Hecarim in this particular meta. How easy it is for Hecarim to literally full clear, even if it's slower than you, to gank bot lane, to clean up mid lane, to clean up top lane, to take a grub and gank top lane again. Four times he's now shown and four times he's had success. That's huge. How do you match that as something that just cannot, you know? Obviously, her clear speed is really going to ramp up, but Nidalee can take over games and you can use your, your range component, but Hecarim is absolutely disgustingly strong. It's very, very difficult to handle him when lanes don't pay attention and respect him and, uh, you know, they give him freebies. So Nidalee can only focus on her own job. So the fact that we got two kills is Gucci. We will take that back. Um, and uh, spend those cash monies. Very, very nice. Good wards here. She will clear this. Again, Poppy is just pushing. Can we do something? Okay, so we anticipate that the Hecarim most likely would sequence down here. Um, he could always shift back up for the blue, anticipating this dive to counter gank it, but regardless, we have to try and make this play. He doesn't. He goes straight to the bot lane, as we see. We go for this. We get another kill. Again, Shinsha gets one back. Hecarim gets another one on the bottom side, though. The Yumi does. Oh, man. So you, you know the Hecarim should go down, right? But because you took Raptors in lower elo games, be mindful of the fact that they will be addicted to things like the blue buff spawning uh, first before the red. They will go to it even if it makes no sense. They will default to their camps more so than ganks. And if they suspect you are there or it's water, they will rotate to it without thinking. So be mindful of the coin flip of low elo jungle decision making when you're tracking. But obviously in this case, in high elo, you do expect this. But mindful. So... He clears this, walks over the last residual vision of the plant, and we see this, which means these people need to be very, very cautious. We are waiting for the Yumi 6. Let's have a look here. Not that close, obviously, because you did roam, but at this point, so many random things have happened. It's very tough to anticipate. <laughs> Level 6 spikes. Um, there, is, there is again. Okay, good. So that's fine. Now that we know that's safe, basically this visual confirm means that we know that it's safe and we don't need to worry about it. And obviously this... This obviously pushes him off as well. Not to say obviously too many times, but good control would place regardless. Now they know where Nidalee is, but you don't have... The, the Rakan setup is really, really good. Um, the Poppy setup is very, very good for the spear hit. But it's not like you have, you know, point and click, uh, Pantheon mid lane or Renekton mid lane. If for those of you who want to be a little bit tilted, even though the Croc can still do work. Don't let the memes sway you from the power that is Renekton in solo queue. Uh, obviously, like all champions, you can get to high-low with them if you know what you're doing. So I don't rule anyone out. I mean, we just had Heimer doing a jungle, for goodness sake. From the blue quadrant, we look to cut the map in, in anticipation of the fact that the Hecarim now could decide to swap, right? Because he knows we stole his blue at this point. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, explanatory, rather. Um, walks over a ward, gets cleared. Look at the damage there. Okay, we're waiting now for another spear. That was just... Ari just absolutely face-checking. We see this clearing. We kind of anticipate this. This, this dude's going topside now. Nidalee knows if, if he gave me the red also, and I took the and he took the dragon, and he knows my red's up, and he knows top is gankable and diveable, and you know there's a herald yada yada. Uh, we can just cut through here and take this RNG crap. Uh, Ari is chunked from this roam, so Nidalee knows she has that mid prior to make this play. Um, okay then, Nidalee once more to the brig. We see this. Poppy, the original dash canceller, but then gets horse whipped. Okay, I think you might die here, Shin Chao. Don't, oof, swiped. Flash swipe, easy. Okay, we can make sure we place traps in case he wants to escape the other direction and we can trigger our passive. Doesn't really, ooh. Nice execute. So, the Ioni bits of lucidity for cooldown plus a blasting one is peak atomization, ladies and gentlemen. Supreme atomization, if you like those, if you like that boot combo. The Blasting Wand on AP Junglers is significantly better than things like Alternator. Please go it. You can fast farmer, your ganking is great damage, 
Um, you don't really need that piss amount of HP anyway. You're still going to get one shot by Hecarim and run down if you don't play the game properly. So, very, very nicely done. Huge damage, huge execute. A nice advanced trap placement. You know, if you see them going this way, then then place it so that they run over it. You can at least get your pounce to, to gap close, especially on a Hecarim who can create mega distance mega quickly. Right, let's take the Herald, and now we go back to base. We see him go to the top side here, and this is what Nidley is doing. 81 to 55 CS. Now, he had to gank a lot and move around the map a lot, right? So what Nidley can do, control the quadrants, get a few camp counter junglings here and there, take the Grob, take the Blue, take the Raptors, take the Red, while the Hecarim is trying to float the objectives and the lane ganks. This is what she does, and all she does is track this, counter gank it, make sure her farm is good, and... Um, all of a sudden, you're up 30 CS and you're 5 0 because you played it mechanically well and you positioned yourself in a place where you could actually react to what's happening on the map. Great, great deep vision. If you're a support player or filled mid or you're a jungler, get these, whoopsie, get these wards down. Absolutely huge. Now we see Hecarim go this direction. We know he's going that direction. We know this is warded as well. Uh, bot lane now must be absolutely shitting their pants. They're going to take <laughs> the Grump. No setup for Ari, which is unfortunate. Setup for Ari is really, really important because of the. The rework being super strong, and obviously she has the um, the ult. Hecarim is steamrolling. That spear does a lot of damage. We do have good support from Orkana who rotated up. Yumi is obviously staying to the uh, Ezreal. That's the downside of Yumi. So they might get three plates here, but Rokan will definitely be stronger at roaming and setting up huge plays. Obviously, if the ADC ints, then the Yumi will ditch the ADC. We've all seen that before. A little low on mana here, but it's fine. We're just looking to crack this case wide open. Um, I mean, he tried. Can you remove the shield? I guess we'll smite it. Smite it, get some mana back from the river. The jungle passive on the item, but... Yeah, it's actually substantial. I mean, it's, it's more than you think. Okay, so he's out of mana. He's being pushed out. We're looking now to have a look to see if we can counter jungle a little bit. Do think we kind of want to think about the dragon, but if butter's no prior, mid is no prior, and people need to reset, don't greed for it, just give it, it's fine. Just make sure you now you're exerting some pressure, you see? Oh, that, oh, wait for it, wait for it, both. The spear with night harvester hits and 10 stacks of dark seal, eight at the time, uh, you will die. Pushes away Vout, now Talon can help us, we could still go to the dragon, but I don't, there's no ways we can, there's no point, there's no point. So here in this particular situation, what people don't do enough in low elo, is when you see Hecarims or people going for the dragons with their prio, just push a wave and push a tower. Kill the laner, push a wave, push a tower. Your tower damage, your turret damage over a course of a win. Look at it and compare it to the turret damage you have when you lose. Um, you'll notice things. I mean, I've done coaching where when people lose in the jungle, their tower damage is zero, literally zero. Because even if they could push a wave here and there and get a bit of tower damage, get some plays, they don't. They just feel like the game's over. Now you're two levels up at this point. Okay, you hit your spear, you're going for your full combo. The guy gets pre-chunked and now is fearful, so runs the other direction. Ezreal's going to rotate here, obviously. Ari has swapped to the mid lane. Yumi is now on the pony, so you don't want to overcommit. Good job, we fall back. What are we at? 2,100 after this. Um, definitely shadow this lane. Excellent job by the Talon. That's just, that's your team making a play. But notice how the Nidley shadows and rotates anyway. So if your team doesn't make a play, right, you're still able to be there to clean up or to make a play yourself. That's the crucial thing here. Obviously, we see Ari from the bot lane, so we know she could cut through here. We know that the red buff is L spawning. Uh, here we go. Hello. Okay, make sure you don't get caught with that charm. Use your map mobility properly. Yumi is on the Hecarim. Again, you could look to cheese this. If you have map scaling, you could always do this. The fact that we see her go here, visual confirmation, right? Hecarim goes mid lane now without even touching his red. I don't know. Hecarim's been a bit random, no? The high variance, repeated gankings of just running around are not going to pay off in the long run if the enemy jungler, like the Nidalee, farms well, play, does her job properly, get some kills in return. Yeah. They're looking. Here we go. See the pings? There we go. I don't know. Just not doing anything. They're, they're trying to just take the mid lane, but he's not farming at all. There's no mid game farming. Even in high yellow, you can see with some jungles, they get really obsessed with just trying to push the map. Pushing the map is great, but you want to take their camps. You want to make sure you're farming as well. If you're not doing that, your lead is stalled or you just lose it. Nidalee now is three levels up because they couldn't really push a tower 
for the longest time, they finally got it. But in the meantime, she got multiple camps and huge levels of experience. Right, what are we buying? Zonia's Hourglass. I think that is a conservative and reasonable <laughs> item to buy second. I have I have seen some people still going the Lich Bane, but the, the Zonia's just, in terms of practicality against their particular combo, if you get picked off, you're going to need it to sustain yourself, and obviously you can come out of it. Ooh, that was close, but we don't really need it to kill. Okay, we burned the ultimate. She died with the ult up. Interesting. Very interesting. We'll take this ourselves. We see this is spawning. We saw the Hecarim here as well. Again, they they the bot lane won. Nidalee and Talon did a very good job of containing um, the ability of the Hecarim to use mid lane to fan out. And top lane, obviously, while it's losing, Hellbreaker, Xin Chao top lane... It's not really an impact on the map, right? There's no effect from the top lane at this point. True island gaming from our top lane brothers and sisters. In the meantime, mid-game farming, ladies and gentlemen. Is there anything worth fighting for? Well, always, but <laughs> not in League of Legends and not right now. Wait for your team to buy, to spend, to catch up, take some camps in the meantime. Wait for the objective to spawn, get your vision control, and then look for the fight so you're, that your team is as strong as possible. And you can make that decision pretty easily. All right, let's have a look. We clear the vision. Out of position is the Ezreal, pull the trigger, good assassination. Exactly right. If you are an assassin jungler, same thing. Dude steps out, you kill him. Out of position, you punish him. Now they're going to rotate 3v1 because that's the numbers of bunches they have, but Poppy has anti-dash, has mega disengage, separates them a little bit, doesn't matter. Uh, Nidalee's going to try and heal and save her. Doesn't really work out, but she should be able to still turn it on the Hecarim. Red Smite is used on the Shin Chao because he has Hellbreaker, but Hecarim was near, so he loses that passive. Hecarim has to run away. Gains a passive again, but doesn't matter, he's dead. Hectic. Very hectic, but 7-0-1. Ah, <laughs> Zonyas. He didn't really need to use it, but I, I guess Hecker might have run on her. You gotta play by ear a little bit, but Zonyas is always very useful. Good, fall back, take the objective. Kill, conversion, ratio. Make sure it's consistent. Make sure there's a vocabulary term you understand. Ooh. Man, Ezra ults cross map. But because you gave up two dragons, right? We need to try to get the third one. So, Jungle Perfection is the quest 701 trying to carry the top laner and the bot lane. Can I title this just how to carry two inting lanes? I mean, she did kind of not do anything, right? She just kind of died. So, <sighs> feeding lanes? Feeding lanes. I'll say feeding lanes. We can do that. So, we definitely want to contest this. Use your spear for zoning. Use your pounce for distancing. Once he goes in, you can, of course, do that. That's the benefit of playing Nidalee. Means you can only fight him inside. Doesn't really matter because we have Magi's plus Zonia's. Use your max range spears for DPS. They fully commit onto you, and it's their demise. That's it. They fully commit to you. You use your champion dis to disengage properly. You go back in with your spell cooldowns, with your pounce. You can use your red smite if you have two charges. Obviously, if you don't, don't waste it. Save it for the dragon. And because they focus on you, what I call it suction effect. They go on you, whatever you may be. Waste spells, ults, and cooldowns. Your team, even if they're behind, as long as they play off of it, can easily clean up. And if you happen to be... And Nidalee, in that situation where your team doesn't do that, you can still create space. Like, you can still do a lot of work. In fact, you know, I include a lot of pentacles from Nidalee on my main channel. In the introductions. Well, I used to. We'll see how we do. Um, so, the Nidalee pentacles are typically fights like that, where you just get engaged on because you're fed and have to deal with you. Create some space. Heal up. Go back in. Hit your, hit your spears. We snack that blue too. You see how it's really hand in the cookie jar sometimes. Even in a game state that's kind of negative... Still, blues up. I know the timer. Quickly get in, get out. I've got about 20, 25 seconds to play with, even less at this point in the game. Don't overcommit. Just take little nibbles here and there. Blue here, Grump there, Raptor's camped here, a couple reds. It adds up drastically. I mean, 171 to 97. Probably is 99 CS. <laughs> 99. Unbelievable. It was almost, it was 100 more than our top laner. Well, not quite, but three, three fourths of the way there. Ari is bot lane. Again, no TP on anyone. Hellbreaker mana bringing forth uh, the, the, the ignites a little bit. Use your spear for poking, your W for visions and traps, and yo. Man, Yumi. So unskilled, this champion. So unskilled. Any other support? 99%, that dude is dead. Baron is up. You could actually pull the trigger on this. But I, I think if you're paying attention, you can see the timeline. You guys can see the timeline, right? Mmm, you can pull the trigger on it, but you gotta smite it. Uh, if you just burnt it, you would've got it. If everyone just burnt it, they would've got it at this point. Oh, no. 
<laughs> no. Oh, that was not clean. Mm. They, they were so concerned with the steel. They were so concerned with the steel. You're nidly. You're ni How is he going to steal that from you? I mean, if, if, I mean, you can see the pings there, but if you, if you don't have it, right, then don't coin flip it. Like, turn beforehand. But, yeah, she didn't have it. But, yeah. I hate that so much. Because basically, if you're going to do it, if you just all burnt it, I 100% guarantee you they get it. All Rakan needs to do is do the zoning and, and knock him up and you're fine. Um, you, you most likely finish it if everyone just did absolutely burnt it. If you don't have smite, then you have to pull off way sooner and really commit to not getting it that low. That's the problem. You keep doing it, it gets super low, and then he can just do what he did. Uh, <laughs> here we go, Poppy TP. We're just kind of making sure we want to stop her going back to base to remove some of the Baron buff. Herald activation, take the tower. I mean, it's a net neutral in that sense, but if you don't have smite, pull off way sooner. Like 4,000, 5,000, turn and kill or, or, or stop it. Don't coin flip it. Because in other games, in lower games, you won't have the mechanical ability to actually clean up. See here, we don't go on the back line. We zone this person. See if you can try. I mean, it's hard to hit a spear on, on Hecarim. That's what we're looking for. Hand in the cookie jar. Good TC, good stun, okay. Oh my goodness. Best is uncomfortable today. Uh, I don't know, Hecarim, man. So... We've managed to rid them of the Baron that was not theirs. What do you do? Do you go back and do jungle? Nah, they're dead. We're Nidley. Wall hop, wall hop, wall hop. Steal everything you can. Steal everything you can. Uh, make sure we set up. We want to get that next Mountain Dragon. Four Mountain Dragons is really, really good. Here your whole team is on the map. So I do understand the desire to get the red buff at most. But that's it, right? You see how she's only doing the red? And now she's coming to the fight. The red buff will help her a lot. So don't keep farming here when your whole team's ready to do stuff, all right? They're obviously going to push mid lane once they see you there. Yumi's going to go in here, be very, very cautious. The Zonyas comes in absolutely huge. The Lich Bane is now completed as well. He ults, he gets a stun. Now, because they've divided, focusing on the Nidalee, the Talon can go backline eating. Nidalee heals up and is able to get out. Again, moving back, moving back, keeping spacing. We have the Poppy doing disruption. Excellent job by the Kaiser to clean up. And now we're sitting backline. We can heal teammates. We can heal ourselves. Excellent job by everyone on the red team there to absorb the pressure from Nidalee. A little bit greedy, a little bit greedy to, 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 to just cut through here knowing that the blue team will see everyone here and just push mid lane. That's what you're programmed to do almost. Um, but well played. Again, Zhonya's into heal, into using pounds to create distance, use your flash, survive. Survive. It's one of the biggest things. On stream I said, and I'm sorry I haven't been streaming as much, I've been quite busy with everything on, on YouTube and coaching. But I said, so what do you think about firstly with jungle? And someone memed like, don't die. And I laughed, and we all kind of chuckled, but at the end of the day, if you're not dead, you can always do things, you know? You can always control things if you're not dead. So, that takes many forms. It's not black and white, it's not a simple thing to say, but 1307, no joke. Took blue stuff, pushed away, very good, go back to base. What shall we buy? Yes, let's go into the mega death cap. The heal and the damages will be extraordinary, trust me. Again, there's still an Ezreal, there's still a Yumi. The wall place here, if you can clear this, do so very, very good, because now they can see your movement. Even if they have no wave, they'll see your movement, which is why people do that. Especially if you're looking to cut and trap. So you, you want to make sure you destroy that ward if possible. Xinxiao gets a bounty. Down 7k. Crab is up. Can we hit the spear? Yes, we can. We see here the... Uh, the Hecarim, don't go in. Too many people will go in here, because Poppy's here. TB is available, but... Ugh. It'd be kind of dicey for you to go in that particular situation. Mm -hmm. Unless you can totally 1v9. Like, if this is 25 minutes and everyone else is, you know, dead. And you really, really fed, then do it. The spear hits, and now you can see. Forced to ult for disengage. Oh, Kaiser, nice job. Can we auto? There we go. Very, very good. Now, they see that, so they're going to pull the trigger on this. Let's see what happens here. Yumi is able to get an ult off and the charm into the Kaiser. Nidalee can now flank and says, hello, let me hit a spear and let me just kill everybody. That was nicely done. I'll rewind for those of you who were really focused on the uh, Nidalee, but triple kill, baby. Beautifully done. So, the blue team will obviously 
obviously, obviously, obviously go in when they see you here. Best thing you can do is look for a good approach angle in that situation. Cut from behind, always. Hit the spear on the carry, make sure they're dead, kill the Yubi, you know, in the meantime with your pounce, and now it's just a cleanup. So excellent job by the, the Nidalee there. Excellent job. And so you know, Nidalee is a mid main. Nidalee's a mid main. A professional mid laner, obviously, but mid laners don't always know how to jungle. But when they do jungle, they understand map pressure, specifically because of shove and roam, specifically because of using pride to invade and get dives, specifically because mid laners typically know quite a lot about map movements. And a good mid laner is always tracking jungle movement because you can cut it off. You can impact it so severely. And so you're seeing a good mechanical player who can use Nidalee to clear decently and make some of the plays that she has. Jungle perfection, ladies and gentlemen. 20 stacks. This one is free. We do have smite. Not using it if you don't need to. Although, you know, I'd, I'd smite for safety versus an Ezreal. That's just me. That's just me. Um... And from here, we should be able to do work to finish. But again, the lead is not big, but it's not, it's not unovercomable for the blue team. I mean, it kind of is with the Nidalee, but you know, if, if you guys don't play properly, if Nidalee becomes a bot in the late game, then obviously you're going to have issues. But in this case, this is a great example of how to play Nidalee in the midst of the late game, using your spacing. Um, just target swap. Target swap to whatever you can. Do damage wherever you can. Uh, use a setup wherever you can. It's beautiful. You know, it's, it's, it's great. Just don't overchase things. If they go, on, go in on you, create distance. Go back in. Use your spears. You have the pounds. You have your passive. You have the execute. Um, there's so many things you can do in terms of team fighting later that means you're not just someone who's chucking spears on the back line. There you go. That was quite interesting. A bit more serious. Uh, hopefully I made a few jokes or some funky faces. I don't know. But if it was serious, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Main channel, new video out. Let me know what you think of that one as well. Patreon is coaching vods and coaching signups. That's about it. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial. Or when Yanka sits a spear.